Welcome in guys, Saturday the 28th. We're doing build class today. Um, Coach Caitlin, Coach Tammy here, gonna start us off with a little warm up. Uh, let's do five push up with downward dog. Each downward dog we're gonna hold for five seconds. We're gonna pedal the feet a little bit in each one. Take your time in that down dog. Press your armpits back to your feet. Good pedal each side. Try to open up that back. After five, we're gonna go to a tall plank. And we're gonna hold that tall plank for 15 seconds. Okay, kick one leg forward for pigeon stretch. Let's roll around on that hip. Loosen up. Back leg goes straight back. Press back, give me five more push up and down dog. Good, pedaling those feet, pressing the arms back towards the feet. Five times, then we're gonna do our plank hold again. And then we'll do pigeon on the other side. Fifteen second tall plank. All right, pigeon on the opposite leg. Okay, back up, we're gonna do a couple of high knee pulls, or excuse me, knee pulls to the chest. Give a good stretch on each side, just alternate legs. Let's do three, four, five reps, something like that on each leg. Uh, 20 jumping jacks for me. And then we'll do 10 forward, 10 backward arm circles, 20 total. All right guys, any other warm up stuff you wanna add in, go ahead and do that. We'll be right back with the first segment for upper body. Okay, part one today, upper body. We're gonna be doing three rounds of six each side, half kneeling Arnold press at tempo. So the half kneeling position, just like Tammy and Caitlin have here, one knee down, one knee up. We're gonna be pressing from the side that has the down knee. The Arnold press, you're gonna be starting in that uh, position where Tammy is or Caitlin is right now with the palm facing in we're gonna press up rotating to the palm facing out and then a three second count on the way back down and that's our Arnold press remember we want a nice smooth rotation back down consistent press going to the same spot each time that's our Arnold press we'll end up doing six each side there with that tempo next exercise is gonna be the bent over row hold this is an isometric position so they'll be hinging like they're partway into a deadlift. 
And then row hold just means squeezing that shoulder blade back, holding at the top of a bent over row for 15 seconds. And then I'll have them lower slowly after 15 seconds. That's our second exercise. You'll set the weights down and we're gonna be doing shoulder scarecrow for our last exercise. So this one has two movements. It's first one is thumbs up, going up and overhead all the way. And then coming back down to parallel to the ground, turning thumbs forward and crossing in front of your body. There you go. Good, so that's our so shoulder scarecrow. We'll end up doing 30 seconds of that. Three rounds of this, starting with Arnold press. First, let's find that weight. Get something that you know you can handle six reps at a controlled pace with. It's okay if it's a little bit lighter. <clears throat> Remember that in these build classes, in these tempo movements, the tempo and control is more important. Go ahead, guys. Six. No help from that opposite hand. Notice how they are letting that arm hang. Control back down, solid lockout. Nice work. Remember that full rotation, hand faces in at the bottom, hand faces out at the top. Six on the right, six on the left, switching the stance. Three second countdown. Super important to follow that tempo and that it's a consistent pace back down to the shoulder. Don't rush through these. Make sure you take your time. Focus on quality movement here. Good, we're moving to that bent over roll hold. If you have multiple weights, you can grab a heavier one for this one. Get a slight bend in the knees and a nice flat back. Chest is out. 15 second hold. Squeeze that shoulder blade back a little higher, Caitlin, a little higher with that row, there you go. And back down nice and slow, switch arms. Squeezing the shoulder blade back at the top, 15 seconds. And back down nice and slow. Good, shoulder scarecrows are next. We're doing these unloaded for 30 seconds. Nice controlled movement. Lock those shoulder blades back down in your back pockets. Remember, thumbs up and overhead, come back to parallel, thumbs shift forward, and we cross in front. Arms stay straight the whole time. Do these nice and slow, try to match the same tempo that Coach Caitlin and Coach Tammy are doing right now. Good work. Five more seconds. Three, two, one, all right. Little break there, good. Shake it out, take a little rest between rounds, nothing too long. And we're starting back again with that half kneeling Arnold press. So pressing from the same arm that the knee is down on same side, excuse me. Fighting for that tempo. Consistent rotation back to that starting position with the palm facing in. Locking out with the palm facing out. Control is key here. If you don't have a weight that allows you to control for six reps, Cut it to five or four reps, whatever you need to do there. Okay, switching sides. Six there. No help from that other hand. This 
half kneeling position. It's a little compromised, it's a little more challenging to stabilize as you press. So hold. So, isometric work, <clears throat> hinging at the hips. Should be working a little bit with that lower back area too, just hold that hinge position. Make sure that you keep that back flat. Nice work, keep squeezing the shoulder back. Three, two, one. Switch sides. Go. Nice flat back, chest out, no rotation there. Just make sure you're squeezing the shoulder. Got five seconds, four, three, two, one, and down slow. Nicely done. All right, shoulder scarecrows, last part. Thumbs go up, crossing up overhead. Thumbs come forward, crossing in front. So rotator cuff exercise, durability work. Try to feel those small muscles working in the back side of your shoulders. Get that little bit extra range of motion here. about the Arnold press from a normal press is that rotation from internally rotated with the palm facing in to externally rotated with the palm facing out. Make sure you have control all the way up and down. Six reps, three second count down. Nice and done. Switch sides. Good. The ladies are doing a nice job, no support from that other hand. Minimal movement in the torso. Keeping control, especially those last few reps. Fighting for that tempo. Takes a lot of concentration to keep the tempo and that perfect rotation back down. Good. Going to that bent over row iso hold. 15 seconds each side. Find that position with a nice flat back, tight belly, and hold. Squeezing the shoulder blade back. seconds, four, three, two, one, and down slow. Switch arms. Here we go. Five, two, one, and rest. Okay, going right to our shoulder scarecrows. Last exercise for part one, 30 seconds. Here we go. <laughs> Good job. Good job, guys. All right. And rest. Let's finish that 30 seconds out. Moving on, we'll have lower body up next. We're back, part two is lower body. Um, three exercises to demonstrate here. 
First one, single arm front squat. We'll be doing five on each side with a one second pause in the bottom. So everything the same as a normal squat, only we had the load just on one side. So you're gonna do five on the right arm, five on the left arm. That one second pause requires you to stop, keep your tension at the very bottom and stand right back up with no bouncing, no loosening up in the bottom. So we'll do five on each arm there. And then it's gonna be the five each side single leg RDLs. You can hold the kettlebell or dumbbell with two hands or one hand, does not matter. But the key here is keeping a nice flat back, hinging at the hip and keeping that rear or trail leg toe pointed straight down to the ground. So there's no twisting or rotating at the hip. We're staying nice and square. You should feel that in that hamstring on the side as loaded up. So we'll have those single leg RDLs and then we'll be moving to 10 each side of the hip circles in the quadruped position. Remember quadruped is hands and knees. The hip circle this is kind of a mobility and range of motion, active range of motion exercise. You can do five forward, five backward, but that knee stays in 90 degrees and you're just gonna drop big circles. Uh, you may be limited by some mobility there. That's okay. Don't twist your back in order to create more range of motion. Keep everything squared up to the ground. Just give, uh, just take what your hip will give you at that position there, all right? Uh, three rounds of this. We're gonna be starting with that front squat. Here we go. Five on each side with a one second pause in the bottom of each one. Three, two, one, and go. <clears throat> Remember, everything remains the same in the squat with this. We have a nice tight stomach and back. Knees track over the toes. Hips go below the knees. Getting that below parallel position, nice work. Notice there's no bounce from them in the bottom. It's a little pause just for a second, and then standing right back up. Squeezing the glutes at the top of each one. If you really wanna challenge yourself, grab a heavier weight with this. Good, we're going to single leg RDL now. Five each side, nice and slow and controlled. Single leg work needs to be nearly perfect positions, otherwise you're not getting very much value out of these. All right, remember, keep your eyes on one spot out in front of you, so keep your focus kind of in the same place as you do these. That'll help with your balance. If you can't get all the way down, that's okay. Go to about mid-shin, come back up. Five on each side. Good. Don't let that trail leg twist. Focus on keeping that rear toe pointed right to the ground. That'll help you stay squared up to the floor. Keep you in a position where your hamstring is loaded up and that hip is loaded up correctly. Don't reach for the ground, keep your shoulder back. Good, all right. Hip, ex or excuse me, hip circles in the quadruped position. 10 each side, you can change direction on these. After five. No need to extend the leg, just draw a big circle with the knee. Focus on movement right at the inside of the hip. Active range of motion means we're controlling this the entire circle. 10 total reps on each leg. a minute to regroup. When you're ready, we'll start back at the top with single arm front squats and a pause. Five each side. Loading one side of these adds an anti-rotational aspect into our squat. So they have to work a little bit in order not to lean for that loaded side. These are gonna be a little lighter than a normal front squat. That's okay, we're still getting a lot of good value out of these. As long as we're doing these with near perfect technique. Knees track over toes, little pause on the bottom. Don't rush that. No bouncing. Good work. Okay, we're gonna find that single leg RDL. Good. 
Nice slow movement, keep your eyes focused on one spot in front of you. Don't reach by bending your back or letting your shoulders round forward. Keep your shoulder in your back pocket. Keep your back flat. If that means you don't get all the way to the ground, that's okay. Go slow with these. Rear toe points straight to the ground. No twisting there. Good. All right, moving to the hip circles. Ten circles on each leg. You can switch directions halfway. Draw a big circle with that knee. Take your time. Actively uh, tracing a big circle with the knee. If you're doing these correctly, this is not an easy movement. You'll feel some fatigue from it. Two down. We have one more round to go. These are going to hop right into it. Feel free to pause. Take a minute if you need it. Single arm front squats. Five each side with that little pause on the bottom. Knees tracking right over your toes. Nice vertical torso. No bounce in the bottom. Make sure you take that pause at that moment down there. Keep tension. work. Good. All right. Single leg RDLs now. Rear toe points to the ground. Shoulder in your back pocket. Don't reach. Don't twist. Make sure we've got that nice straight back. Keep eyes focused on one spot right in front of you. That'll help improve your balance. Don't rush through these. Caitlin's got two hands on there. Tammy's just doing one. She's just holding with the opposite side. Either one of these is okay. Find what works best for you. Good work. Five each side, and then we're on the hip circle. Last round, or last, uh, yeah, last round of this. 10 hip circles each side. You can do five one way, five the other way if you want. Big circle. Good work. going to do it for our lower body segment. We'll be moving to a midline segment next. You'll need a box or a bench for this next part. Okay, so uh, back for part three, midline segment of build today. We're going to start, we've got three exercises. We're going to demonstrate all these uh, to start with. First one is a single leg hip bridge. You're gonna need a box, a bench, a chair, something stable. Uh, if you don't, you can go on the floor, but uh, hip bridge will be single leg up on the box. I'm gonna have Caitlin demo that. You can also grab a weight, hold it right on the crease of your hips if you want as well, and bridge up. You're gonna do 10 on each leg. Good 
Put your heel on top of the box. There you go. Squeeze your glute at the top of each one. Make sure we're getting all the way up. 10, and then we're gonna go to the other leg for 10. Get the most value out of these, you want a little uh, pause or fix at the top of them where you can squeeze the hip. Good work. All right, next one, we're gonna be using the box, chair, bench, whatever you have as well. Feet elevated plank march. So, in this one, we're in a tall plank position. Feet are up on the box. You can do this scale by just doing a normal plank on the floor. And we're gonna march the feet back and forth. Good, and we're going for 30 seconds. Try to keep the hips down, control that leg lift. These are tough. You're halfway, fight through them. Keep it going, and rest. Good. All right, last one, we have good mornings. So we have some hinging here again, but a little bit different. You can do these prisoner style with hands behind your head, and just kind of feel these as a good stretch for the hamstrings and lower back. So hands behind the head, slightly bent knees, driving the hips back while your weight stays on your heels. Only go down as low as you can maintain a nice straight back. and you should feel a little stretch in your hamstrings. If you want to, go ahead, grab a kettlebell, dumbbell, something like that. Hold it on your back or hold it in your chest. Ten reps. Remember, focus if you're doing these light or unloaded, focus on just perfect positions, creating tension in the right spots, which is your lower back and hamstrings and glutes, squeezing your glutes at the top. Nicely done, that's one round. All right, back to our single leg hip bridges. 10 on each leg, load is optional, chair is optional, however you wanna do these. Find a way that's gonna be challenging for you. Pushing through that heel, squeezing your glute at the top. Make sure your hips come all the way to the top extended. Good work. Ten on each leg. Get the squeeze at the top of each one. All 10 and then take a break. And then we're gonna be going to our feet elevated plank march. Okay, feet up on the box, chair, bench, whatever you got there, and go. Alternating those leg lifts, keeping the hips down, keeping the stomach tight. Looking good, one rep at a time. Put that heel up high, almost there. Keep fighting. About five seconds, four, three, two, one, and rest. Good, we got uh, good mornings next. Feel free to do these unloaded or with a small weight there.
Slightly bent knees, feet under the hips. If you don't feel your hamstrings, one of the things you can do is uh, go a little bit wider with your feet. So kind of almost in a sumo stance. That should help lengthen your hamstrings a little bit. So if you're pretty flexible, try a little wider stance. If you're not very flexible, just keep them right under your feet. These two are doing a loaded version this time. They're doing a great job of keeping that nice straight back, going down slow and controlled, feeling tension in the hamstrings and lower back area, and then coming right back up, squeezing their glutes at the top. 10 reps total. And this will be the end of round two. One more time through our midline segment. Nicely done. Let's take a little break here. Get focused for our last round. Okay. Starting off with single leg hip bridge. Final round for today. Grab a weight if you can, or a box or chair or something to elevate that foot on. Drive down through that heel. Bridge up as high as you can. Squeeze your glute at the top. Make sure you fix the top, or fix at the top on each one. We're near the end, let's not rush through this. Good. If you can't get 10 reps straight through body weight on these, this is something you should probably do more of. Keep it going. Squeeze at the top of each one, don't rush through these. All right. Moving to our plank, feet elevated plank, march. These ones are harder than they look. All right, 30 seconds, here we go. If you can't march all the way through, that's okay, just hold that elevated plank or bring your feet to the floor. Good, keep it going about halfway. Keep your body in a straight line. Almost there. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, and rest. Last one, 10 good mornings, weighted optional. Focus on this one today is trying to feel tension in the right spots. Slightly unlocked knees. Driving your hips back while staying on your heels. If you don't feel your hamstrings, try a wider stance like Caitlin has over here. That's gonna help get our hamstrings stretched out a little bit more. Think about trying to keep your chest up, trying to touch your hips to the wall behind you. Keeping your weight on your heels. Once you feel that full stretch in your hamstrings and you feel your back start to lose tension, come right back up, squeeze your glutes at the top. A lot of hamstring and glute in this last part. Should, feel, should be feeling the fatigue in there by now. Almost done, last couple reps. Nice work. All right guys, we did it. 